Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for holding this critically important hearing today and for, for waving me on so that I could participate. In tumultuous times like these, the critical role of congressional oversight cannot be overstated. Once again, this administration's blatant disregard for the humanity and dignity of the world's most vulnerable is on full display. Over the last several days, we have witnessed the bloodshed, displacement, and overall humanitarian crisis that can result from the reckless and self-serving decisions by this administration. We have heard about the military and national security implications of the administration's removal of U.S. forces from Syria. However, it's equally important to center the lived experiences and agency of our Kurdish allies whose value cannot and should not be measured solely by their contributions to U.S. interest. Ms. Torres, based on your national security expertise, how would a diplomatic approach on the front end, paired with a strategic troop withdrawal, have avoided this violence in the first place? Thank you, Representative Presley. I think first off, and to take a step back, uh, as a former diplomat, I have participated in the policy process uh, under both administrations. Um, I participated and been on the other side of our administration's leaders, having discussions and debates on foreign policy and on discussions on, on what happens next, assessments of intelligence, assessments of what's happening on the ground, talking to local stakeholders. I think that right now what is happening is a lack of a, of a foreign policy process a lack of a national security process. And so with that in mind, I think that this entire decision has been marred with a lack of an understanding of what's happening on the ground. So it's, it's difficult for me to say what should have happened, but what I can say is that there wasn't a policy process around what should have happened. Very good. Ms. Romero, your organization, uh, Save the Children, is on the front lines of helping those who are now displaced due to this humanitarian crisis. How will the increased instability in Northeast Syria affect the ability of organizations like Save the Children and others to operate in the Northeast? A lot depends on how, oops, sorry, a lot depends on how things develop. Um, but right now we're facing the possibility of the, the supply lines, the roads that we use to get supplies in to northeast Syria to reach populations will be blocked or will be in, so insecure that we will not be able to reach certain populations. Um, we know that our national staff is very concerned. We face the possibility that they will themselves become refugees. Some of them already have, or IDPs rather, um, and that we will be faced with a smaller workforce. Um, we face the possibility of uh, existing camps where people are able to arrive becoming overcrowded, uh, the wash, or the, the sanitation services, the water services being inadequate um, to reach the population. Um, we face the prospect of not knowing where people are and not knowing how to reach them. And even if we do know where to, how to reach them, not being able to uh, cross the violence in order to reach them. So uh, it makes an already volatile and difficult operational environment even uh, more volatile, more uncertain, and it makes our mission to reach the most vulnerable children that much more challenging. Thank you. I want to focus on another non-military consequence of this abrupt withdrawal. A key component of the Defeat ISIS campaign was to help provide local communities with stabilization assistance to enable displaced persons to safely and voluntarily return to their homes. According to the State Department, stabilization can include, quote, efforts to establish civil security, access to dispute resolution, deliver targeted basic services, and establish a foundation for the return of displaced people. Ms. Torres, would you agree with that characterization? Yes, I would agree. And Ms. Ahmed, can you briefly discuss how the SDC supports U.S.-led stabilization efforts in Northeast Syria? The Heli, the Stakirna, 
and to some extent we were assisted in that that aspect to support local administrations there were promises that the stability and security will be further provided Daco, uh, a return, a comeback for ISIS will not be allowed. That included uh, rehabilitating or educating the society. And we had some certain programs to de-radicalize ISIS families. But with Turkish government's attack, all these were on hold, all were destroyed, these programs. Now ISIS is re-emerging. The security of the region is collapsed. In the so-called safe zone, massacres are ongoing. And the Turkish threats against slaughtering still continuing. With what, under what international law Turkish government is, has been using F-16s to, to attack us, to your partners that have been fighting against ISIS? American weapons are being used against us. With what authority crossing the border of another country and killing attacks against us while we had no threat? Thank you. The gentleman's time is expired. Thank you. The gentleman from Louisiana.